Good morning. I'm Asan Giordano, and this is your DMV Daily Dose for Monday, December 9th, 2019. It's currently foggy and 43 degrees in Baltimore. Expect cloudy skies, then rain starting in the morning. Temperatures are heading up from 42 degrees to 53 tonight. Yesterday, our beloved Baltimore Ravens won their ninth straight game with a 24-17 win over the Buffalo Bills, solidifying a spot in the playoffs as Lamar Jackson threw for three touchdowns while gaining over 1,000 yards with his leg for the season and came up only 23 yards short of Michael Vick's record. And with the Patriots losing to the Kansas City Chiefs, we now hold a secure grip on the AFC's top seed meaning that the playoffs will come through Baltimore if the Ravens win two of our remaining three games. Our next opponent is against the New York Jets here on Thursday down at the bank, followed by a trip to Cleveland to face the Browns, and the last game is back down at the bank against the hated Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's go Ravens! And our beloved Maryland Terps men's basketball team remains undefeated at 10-0 and and is now the number three team in the country. So make sure you show our NCAA team some love as well. I just bought a Terps sweatsuit to match all the rest of my Terps gear. Let's go Terps. And congratulations goes out to Yvette Lewis, the Maryland Democratic Party former chairwoman who won back her seat on Saturday. Joining our partner in crime, Senator Corey McRae, the party's first vice chair, and trying to change the culture of the Democratic Party here in the state of Maryland. A DMV Daily News article shall follow about this dynamic duo later today. Now, Maryland Matters is reporting on Baltimore City's own Senator Bill Ferguson. The incoming powerful Senate president, once the 2020 legislative session starts on January 8th, wasted no time filling the top spot on the Judicial Proceedings Committee in the Senate, tapping the panel's number two, Senator Will Smith Jr., a Democrat from Montgomery County, as the new chairman. Now, Ferguson's decision, announced last week, came just one day after the current JPR chairman, Senator Robert Bobby Zirkin, a Democrat from Baltimore County, revealed that he plans to resign before the start of the General Assembly session next month. The time and the venue of Ferguson's announcement were fortuitous as Smith had a long scheduled welcome home fundraiser set for Wednesday night at the Civic Center in downtown Silver Spring. Following his recent return from an eight month deployment to Afghanistan with the Naval Reserves. The news of Smith's elevation was the highlight of an emotional and star-studded evening that featured tributes to the 37-year-old lawmaker from some of the state's most powerful politicians. Now, Smith represents a dramatic departure from Zirkin at the helm of the Judicial Proceedings Committee, both ideologically and stylistically. He's perceptibly more liberal than Zirkin on several key issues that come before the panel, and while he hasn't been tested in such a lofty leadership role, He is considered one of the nicest lawmakers in Annapolis. Smith's rise to JPR chairman marks one of the fastest political ascensions in recent state house history. He was elected to the House of Delegates just five years ago in 2014, appointed to fill a vacancy in the Senate in late 2016, became the Judicial Proceedings Vice Chairman at the beginning of this year, and now is set to become the chairman of the committee. Now, the Baltimore Sun is reporting that Baltimore County Police announced yesterday that an officer assigned to the department's Essex precinct was arrested and charged with felony rape and misdemeanor assault, according to a news release. Officer Anthony Michael Westerman was arrested Saturday, according to online court records. He is being held at the Baltimore County Detention Center and denied bail. Quote, the allegations made in this case are reprehensible and are not representative of the values and ethics of the Baltimore County Police Department, said Baltimore County Police Chief Melissa Hyatt in a statement issued on Sunday. She goes on to say that as a result of a thorough investigation by the Baltimore County Police Department's Criminal Investigations Bureau, the officer has been arrested and suspended without pay. Now, Westerman joined the Baltimore County Police Department in 2013. 
and according to online records, did not list an attorney for that 25-year-old officer. A preliminary hearing is scheduled for him for January 3rd. Now, the Baltimore Brews Mark Reuter is reporting about the legislation passed by the Baltimore City Council that addresses the black eye Baltimore's elected officials suffered from the recent conviction of former Mayor Catherine Pugh um, and results of her Healthy Holly Children's Book scandal. However, having been scaled back and enforcement dependent, the measure may just powder it over. Now, the bill can best be described as the Healthy Holly Loophole Closing Amendment in that it requires businesses owned by an elected official or their spouse to publicly disclose customers who spend $1,000 or more a year if those customers are a lobbyist or are regulated by or do business with the city of Baltimore. Now, the bill's sponsor, Councilman Ryan Dorsey of the 3rd District, called the bill groundbreaking and said that, quote, it sets a new president on the state level. Well, however, a careful reading of Council Bill 19-0457, including some last-minute amendments, reveals less of a sudden lunge towards cleaner government and maybe a small step towards more disclosure. The amendments raised the disclosure threshold from the once $20 to the now $1,000 and limited the scope of the bill by identifying only certain kinds of businesses that can be covered. It relies on enforcement by the city ethics board's oversight, which city council president Brandon Scott has called entirely inadequate. Dorsey himself discussed the amendments in a Facebook post where he said, in certain moments, it felt like I just want I, what I wanted was just being whittled away. But he also continued to say, in the end, though, I think what we have is the bill we need. Now, speaking of Councilman Dorsey, you'll be able to ask him about this legislation and so much more tonight as DMV Daily News presents our Value My Vote 2020 series tonight as we bring you the Democratic debate amongst the third district candidates. Rain Pryor, the challenger, will go head to head versus Councilman Ryan Dorsey set to take place from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Function Coworking Community Center located at 4709 Harford Road. So make sure you join us there tonight at 6 o'clock. And, and if you can't make it, watch it live streamed on our DMV Daily News Facebook page. I'm your man, Mr. Politics, and this has been your DMV Daily Dose for Monday, December 9th, 2019. For more information on the articles that I've mentioned, just go on over to our website at www.dmvdaily.news.